Hi everyone, welcome back to Writer's Corner. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. I'm Rudrani and I'm from Tilsi Creative Writers. And in today's video, I'd like to share another one of my short stories with you. It's called The Road to Hell. And again, it was one of the weekly topics for my writers group. And though I wrote the story recently, the topic was actually given to us before this lockdown and the pandemic. So the story is set in the pre-pandemic times and I hope you like it. So here we go. The Road to Hell. It was the start of summer. That particular day was especially warm and sunny. Mina could see that summer madness was setting in. People were wearing less and driving erratically. Some had their windows down with senseless music blaring at a deafening volume. She indicated left and turned onto the long winding slip road, preceded by two other cars. A white Mercedes convertible fast approached behind her just inches away. At a glance in her mirror, she saw a middle-aged female with short mousy hair and bright red lips. The woman looked irritated. Just as Mina had suspected, the female hastily overtook the line of cars and sped past. Rashly joining onto the motorway, she almost hit a passing car, the driver of which was too stubborn to give her way. Idiots, said Mina to herself. Safely joining the motorway, Mina entered the middle lane. It was just before nine in the morning and the traffic was still heavy but moved at a steady pace. She had been looking forward to that day all week. It was Friday and her day off. She had decided to go to the Gateway Centre and have a relaxing day in her own company and treat herself to some much needed retail therapy. Keeping her fingers crossed, she hoped that nothing would hinder her journey. That motorway was notorious for delays and disruptions due to accidents or earnest suiciders threatening to jump off a bridge. Often, exits, entrance slip roads or sections of the motorway would be closed off, creating problems for commuters. Mina coined it the road to hell. She was pleased to see the variable speed limits removed. It was a nightmare roller coaster going from 70 miles per hour down to 50, then up to 60 miles per hour and down to 40 in one stretch. In addition, she always got some lunatic tailgating her. Could they not see the speed limit signs? Mina turned on some music. It was a must for her while driving and it never posed her any distraction. Being so used to that stretch of the motorway, she knew it like the back of her hand. She could drive on it with her eyes closed, not that she ever did. Scanning around her, she wondered about the other drivers, who they could be, what they did and where they were travelling to. There were the usual overcautious drivers in the first lane and the odd lane hogger in the middle lane, oblivious to those around him. Though new speed cameras had been installed, they were not a deterrent for the seasoned racers, men and women alike. A silver Audi encroached behind her and began to tailgate. There were several cars in front of her and she was already touching 74 miles per hour. Looking into her mirror, Mina saw a male driver, formally dressed, getting agitated. She found herself muttering, Where do you want me to go? Overtake then, you fool. He must have read her mind. Shaking his head in annoyance, he swiftly moved into the third lane to overtake, where he soon met his match. Another boy racer in a large black 4x4 menacingly drew near the Audi, chasing it out of his way before zooming off into the distance. With his pride hurt, the Audi followed in pursuit. Mina was glad that they were out of her way. She doubted that they would get caught for speeding or dangerous driving. Such people never did. She glanced at her fellow motorists. Everyone seemed so quick-tempered and impatient. Road rage and temerity had become commonplace. Had she been driving a fancy car or a beast of a vehicle, perhaps she too would have ruled the lanes. She was halfway to her destination. It always took a little longer in the mornings. With 20 eventful minutes lapsed, she had another 35 to go. 
As traffic had slowed down in the middle lane, Mina moved into the third, picking up the pace. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a red sports car appeared behind her. What now? She caught a clear view of the driver, an unsavoury looking male with a shaven head who sported a sleeveless top and seemed to be covered in tattoos. Unable to shift into the middle lane immediately, she remained in the third one. Being wary of the speed cameras and of the police secretly lurking around, she pressed the accelerator to touching 80 miles per hour. The driver was relentless and edged closer to her. How could she escape from the psychopath? Her heart pounded. She was infuriated, but kept calm and continued. Eventually, she got the chance to go back into the middle lane but he quickly swerved into it before her. Then overtaking her from her left, he swerved back into the third lane in front of her. His unusual number plate caught her eye. K1SS666. Daft number plate, she scorned. She would not forget that one so easily. The car was an old model and had clearly been modified. Slowing down a little, he made obscene gestures. Cursing him under her breath, Mina managed to return to the middle lane, but she felt his car hovering beside her in the next lane. Turning to him, she saw his eyes glaring and his face red with fury. With his right hand on the wheel, his left hand made the same obscene gestures. Her unresponsiveness further fueled his fury and he fired profanities at her. You stupid! followed by the infamous F's and B's. After the cur had had his fill, he accelerated at lightning speed into what was now the fourth lane. Yeah, go kill yourself, she snapped and let out a sigh of relief. Mina's journey continued uneventfully for a while. Her destination was at Junction 10 and just as she crossed Junction 16, a warning sign appeared. Accident, slow down. Not again, she cried. Traffic slowed down and queues began to build up. Two police cars raced past using the hard shoulder, followed by two ambulances manoeuvring their way through the traffic. Another sign appeared. Accident after junction 15, followed by another lane closure. The fourth lane was closing, which created more chaos as drivers began changing lanes to the other three lanes some more impatiently than others. An idea sparked in her head. Seizing the opportunity, Mina went into the first lane, hoping that she would be able to exit at Junction 15 and take the inside roads to reach her destination. The traffic moved at a snail's pace and came to a standstill after Junction 15. She was slowly reaching the junction when suddenly, in the near distance, she saw the carnage. Three vehicles had collided into one another. One of them had first crashed into the divider, which was badly damaged. Shattered glass was dispersed all around the vicinity. As Mina got closer to the junction, she noticed that a red car had been sandwiched between a minivan in front and a large X8 4x4 behind. It was turned at an angle, leaving the number plate visible. Mina read it. K1SS666, she gasped. Looking at the scene, it was obvious to her that it was impossible for the driver of the red mangled car to have survived. From what she could deduce, the other two drivers escaped with injuries and no other passengers could be seen. K1SS666, she read again. Satan had given him the kiss of death. Mina felt no sympathy for the driver. She drove on to the exit slip road and leaving the motorway, she took one last look at the carnage. Who's the stupid one now? The end. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked that. Please click like, share and subscribe. And I hope to see you again in my next video.